Hello, welcome back to the third episode. Thanks to everyone who's watched so far. Thanks to everyone who's subscribed. We've got, I think, 15 subscribers now. Ooh, I think we're well on our way to 72 million there. So let's go ahead and insert a script. And I want to show you something. So let's say I want to write a little counter. So I write print and I type one. And I add another line and I say print two. And I say print three. And of course, these are just numbers, so they don't have to be in uh, quotation marks. Although I could do them inside quotation marks, this wouldn't actually make any difference. This is a number data type, like we talked about in the last video. So that's why it doesn't need to be in a quotation mark. Remember, uh, quotation marks are just for strings. So let's say print four, and then we'll say print five. And then, of course, if I go ahead and run this, I'll see that down the output. Zoom in, you can see that. One, two, three, four, five. Brilliant. And then, of course, I could add a little weight in between them. Uh, just make it wait, say, 0.2 seconds. Just so you can see them coming in one at a time. And I run that again. And you can see one, two, three, four, five. Pretty quick, but you get the idea. Now, if I wanted to keep this counter going, I would have to add even more lines, and I'd have to go and change each one, so I'd have to make this 2 a 6, and the 3 a 7, and so on. And I'm going to end up with a lot of lines, and this is not a very efficient way of programming, I'm sure you can see. So, let's look at another way of doing it. We can use something called a while loop. Now, there are various loops available to us in programming, and in Lua specifically. Uh, these allow us to iterate through a code multiple times, like we're trying to do here. We just want to change one simple thing. We don't need to have hundreds and hundreds of lines just to change one thing. So I'm going to say while, and then we need a condition. So if this condition is true, then the thing is going to keep looping. So in this case, I'll simply say true, which means it will always be true and it will always run. Now, if I only wanted it to run, run for a set amount of times, then I could add some kind of condition there. I was going to say, while the counter is less than six. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to say, while well, true. So it's always going to run. And then I simply type do. And I press new line. And you see this little end appears. Now, if that's the entire code block right here, everything between do and end will be run inside this loop. So I'm going to say print. And I'm going to type hello. And this is a string, of course. And then, because this is a while true loop, it's very important I add a wait down below. In fact, let's try and run this now. And you'll see why this isn't a good idea. So if I just go ahead and click run, it's going to take quite a while to load. And this might crash Studio. Let's see. Okay, so we've got game script timeout down at output. But before it timed out, it managed to print, hello, what is that, 15,750 times. Okay, so clearly we don't want to do that. So what we need to do is we need to add a little weight down below. The reason we need to do this is because otherwise it's going to try and do this constantly. And computers, as we know, are very fast. And if it's trying to do this at every single clock cycle of the computer, then you're just going to nuke the thing. It's not going to be able to process anything else. So you're just going to take up too much resources. So we add in a little delay and we just say only print it every 0.5 seconds. Don't do it constantly. This will give it a bit of time to breathe and so it can do other things too. We run this, we'll get hello, 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 hello. And that is quite small. I'm not sure if you can see it. I'm zoomed in, but there's a little uh, in brackets, it says times 21, 22, 23, and so on. But going back to our previous example where I printed out a number, we can do that as well. So if I add in a new variable, and I'll say uh, counter 
equals one. And I'm going to say, instead of true, I'll say, well, counter uh, is less than. Do you remember this less than sign? I'm sure you've seen it before. Just the chevron pointing to the left. If you've done any maths in your life, I'm sure you've seen it. And it's very useful in programming when you want to compare two va values. So we'll say, well, counter is, uh, let's do 10. Well, it's less than 10. Print, I'm going to print out the counter variable, just print out its value. And so on the first loop, the counter is going to be equal to one. It's going to print out count, counter, wait 0 0.5 seconds, but then before looping it again, because at the moment, counter is always going to be less than 10, I'm going to add a new line. I'm going to say counter equals its counter plus one. So what this line is going to do, it's going to add one to itself every single time. So on the first round, it'll be one, then two, three, four, five, until we get up to 10, at which point the loop is going to stop. So if we run this, we'll get one, two, three, four, all the way to nine, and it stops at nine because if we reach 10, then that would not be less than 10. So there we go. We've done that in what? Half a dozen lines. And if we tried to write this out uh, manually, we would have probably needed a dozen odd lines and would have, it would have been very messy. So you can see this is a much more efficient way of coding. Now we can also do something else with this. I talked about, uh, I wanted to say more about the print command in the first video, but I said it was a bit boring. But hey, let's talk about the print command now. So I can also add in to the print some a, st a string with quotation marks. And I'll type, uh, let's see, I have, and then I'll add a space, quotation mark. And if I add in a two dots and then counter, and then another two dots after counter, and then another string, space. Uh, I have a uh, fish, we'll put. And this is called concatenation. Now, this isn't particularly relevant to the while loop, but it's just a little thing I wanted to show you. So we've got this little string. This is just like our hello world. But then we're adding in as well this little. Uh, variable. So if we run this, I have one fish, two fish, three fish, all the way up to nine again. And so we can add that value into this uh, print output. So that's pretty neat, something that you might want to play with. So I'm sure you can see the power of while loops, but let's show you another example. So we're going to add in a part here. Uh, actually, we'll move that script into this part. And then we'll delete the contents of this script and we'll write ourselves a new one. So how about we add in a light. So insert object point light. Uh, we'll just change the properties of this light a little bit. The brightness is one. Let's change it to five. And let's, yeah, that'll be all right. And we'll make the color, make the color red so you can see it a bit better. Yeah, and we'll go into our script. First off, we'll create a variable so we can access that light because we want to make a little flashing light. I think that's what we're going to do. So we'll say light equals script dot parent dot point light because that's the name of it. And then we're going to add in our loop and we're going to say while true do new line and we're simply going to say light dot enabled, which is a property of light, which just means is it on or is it off? And we're going to say equals false. Wait uh, 0.3 seconds, just don't have to wait very long. Light dot enabled equals true. So we're going to turn it back on. And then we need to wait 
another 0.3 seconds. And if we run this, we can see that it should flash on and off. There we go. We've made a little flashing light. So this is, you could see this is something you could use in a game. Uh, let's resize it a little bit. I don't know. We just I don't really know what we want to do with it. But you could see this on like a cop car maybe, something like that. Play the game, see what it looks like. And there you go, you could have this as a siren or something in your game. So this is definitely a useful application of the wow loop. And you can do a bunch of stuff with this, but that's about all we're going to do in this tutorial. Hopefully that's given you some ideas. Uh, that's all for now. Make sure to buy my imaginary merch. And see you later. Mm -hmm.